Hello everyone and welcome to uh, part four of the Frame Academy project create a web VR site with basic HTML. So I hope you went through the challenge for part three and brought a uh, 3D model from Sketchfab into your page. Um, I had already done that before with my sheet model here. So I've got nothing new to show you in my scene. Got my model, got a few shapes and so forth. I'm really excited about this part of the project because I think now you're going to see that because you put in the work to learn the concepts uh, that you've learned, now doing these other things uh, I think will be just a lot easier, right? We're going to bring in a photosphere. You'll see how easy that is now. Um, we're going to bring in some text uh, and so forth. So now that you know about HTML elements and how to modify them with attributes, um, you're going to be off to the races. So I'm, I'm really excited about this. Okay, for the first part, we are going to bring a photosphere uh, into our scenes. Now, why would you even want to bring a photosphere in? Well, right now, check out my scene. I've got this uh, sort of white sky, and it's not all that exciting. Um, so a photosphere is just a good way to uh, give a nice background to your scene. Um, maybe you took a 360 photo or a photosphere, and you'd like to show it to other people. Um, around the world by publishing it online uh, in a way that people can view in VR if they want. Uh, that's This is also a great sort of use case. So, you know, there are lots of reasons why you might want to bring a 360 degree photo uh, into your scene. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now to find uh, a 360 degree photo or a photosphere as they're sometimes called, um, you can look in a few places. So I know that uh, a website Flickr, for example, has a whole library of uh, photospheres. Um, I put a link to that here in the page for the project. Uh, there's even a, a library just dedicated to it um, and they're formatted the right way and everything. You can also just do a Google image search um, and search for whoops, search for uh, 360 photo or photosphere. Now photospheres need to be formatted in a way um, that's called equa rectangular. So when you're doing a search, just make sure you're searching for equa rectangular. And that just means the dimensions are set up um, a certain way, and that's the that's the proper format for bringing into these projects. Okay, you'll know that something is equa rectangular just by the way if its dimensions if it's uh, twice as wide as it is tall. Okay, that's just a good rule of thumb. Uh, so I'm looking at this one, for example, clicking on oh, download, and I see that its dimensions, right, it says, you know, at large, 2048 by 1024. So yeah, this is twice as much as this. So it is equa rectangular. Okay. All right. Um, I found this one that I sort of like. Uh, I provided a link to it uh, in the text for the project, but this is the one that I'm going to use. So feel free to use this one or any other one that you find. Uh, go ahead and download it to your machine, to your computer. Just right click and save image as. Okay. And then just go ahead and save it. Now we have to do the same process that we did to bring uh, a 3D model into your project, which is drag the file into your assets library, right? This will kind of host it online and make a handy URL for you that you can use in your project. So I'm just going to drag it right in uploading and there it is. Okay, perfect. Um, click on it and then you can go ahead and copy its URL. It's ready to use. Okay, head back to your HTML file and the element that we can use to bring in a photosphere is called a sky. It's kind of you're setting the sky for your scene and we just need to set its source as we've done a few times give it a source attribute equals and then in quotation marks and just go ahead and paste in um, that url that you copied from your assets folder right, right here paste it right in and it looks good and oh, i forgot to put it inside of the opening tag okay perfect all right let's see how it looks and there we had it Right, that photosphere is now set as the background for our scene. Okay, now what if you wanted to just bring a flat, uh, regular 2D image into your uh, immersive website instead of a, you know, a 360 photo? 
uh, that's fair enough. There are lots of reasons why you might want to bring just a regular, you know, good old fashioned image into your scene. So what I want to do is, you know, I've got a floor right here that is just kind of green. And I'd like to set an image as the uh, kind of the source material, the texture for the floor to liven it up a little bit. And I've, I'd like a wood floor. So I did a search for a wood floor texture and I found this uh, regular 2D image. Go ahead and download it. You save it as wood floor. And then just as you did with the photosphere, drag it into the assets folder of your glitch project that will host it online and give you a URL to work with. Go ahead and click on it and copy that URL. Just by clicking that button. Head on back to your project and I need to find the plane entity that is my floor. You see it's this one here. That's good and fine. You might be thinking, oh, how, how do you know? It's so hard to tell. Well, I know uh, that its scale is 30, 30, 30 and so forth, but you know, it's kind of tricky. I have a lot of planes. To make it easier, you can give entities IDs that are unique. I'm going to give this one an ID of floor. Right? I gave it the ID attribute equals and then floor as the value in quotation marks, as always. Um, this comes in handy later, by the way, setting these IDs, because that's how you set up uh, some interactivity as well. So it's good practice to, uh, to set IDs. But now that I've done that, I also need to set the source. Um, just as we did with the sky, I'm going to set source equals, and I'm going to paste in the URL for our wood texture that we got right here. Okay. Now that that is set, let's take a look. All right, fair enough. I've got the wood. The green still seems to be showing up. I've got this ugly, really ugly looking green wood. That's no good. So I'm going to remove the color here. Now, if you look closely at this color value, you might be thinking that doesn't say green. That's a hash sign with a bunch of numbers. There's a way to represent colors with uh, this kind of code. It's called a hex value. And we don't need to get into the technicalities of this, but just so you know, um, any color has a hex value. And there are websites, if you just search for hex color values, that let you browse any color under the sun, and it will show you its hex value, which you can then copy and paste right into your project. But I digress. We're trying to get rid of this color. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove it. Now, it still did look a little bit funky. Um, and I found an attribute that helped me out a bit um, called repeat. So I'm going to go ahead and use, uh, got it right here, the, the correct value here. Um, here we go. And what repeat does is it made sure that, it makes sure that it's uh, kind of repeating the image uh, in the right way, uh, vertically and horizontally. Now you might be thinking, where did you find this? Where did you come up with repeat? Um, to find this, I looked in the A-frame documentation. Now, documentation is just a fancy word for kind of like a learning resource. This is where you can learn all there is to learn, really, about A-frame. So I went to the documentation page, which, by the way, is aframe.io slash docs, and here you have it. Um, this is a great place to go, by the way, maybe after this project, if you're looking to extend your learning. Um, now that you know a lot of the fundamentals, you'll be able to, uh, to go through this. And, you know, I browsed around and I saw, oh, if you make an image, um, it lists all of the available attributes you can put on it. And I saw one called repeat. Now, a lot of this was just trial and error, right? I, I wasn't sure what it did at first, and I experimented with it, and I saw, oh, that does do what I wanted. Sometimes that will work and sometimes it won't. Um, you have to kind of tinker and experiment. Once I set that though, now this looks good. Um, it's not as like stretched out as it was. It's repeating the way that I want. It's got that ugly green out of the way. And I just have a nice wood floor. Okay, last but not least, we are going to bring some text into our scene. Um, text is really handy, right? The, the written word isn't going anywhere, even if VR you know, takes over the world. Um, words are still important. <laughs> so you might want to like leave some instructions for your users who check out your scene. You might want to 
put the name of your company or school uh, inside of your uh, immersive website. So there are lots of reasons why you might want to use text. So what I'm going to use is the a text entity. Now, once again, you might be wondering, how did you know that that was an available uh, entity? Well, I checked out the documentation, as I mentioned in the previous little section there. I was browsing around. If you look on this side navigation bar, down at the bottom, you'll see a section called primitives. And this is where you can see all of the entities that we've been using um, in our project, right? Here's a box. Uh, here is GLTF model, right? And I saw that there was one called text. So we can go ahead and use it, right? And when I clicked on it, not only, not only do they give you an example, but they also show you all of the available attributes that you can put on it. Now we'll get into what this means in a future, uh, in a future project, but I digress. So I'm back here. I've made a text uh, element, text entity. That won't do anything yet, though, because we haven't told it um, what text to put in there, right? What's the value of our text? What, what is the word uh, or words that we're putting in there? Now, I've already got uh, the text that I know that I want. So I just pasted this in here. I got this from the project site, but I'll show you uh, how it's working, right? So to actually define the words that you want in your text, that's with the value attribute, okay? Value equals, I wanted this to say Frame Academy Project 1, so I put that value, as always, inside quotation marks. I wanted to give it a position, of course, so that it shows up right when the user lands on the website. I want it to show up immediately. I don't want people to have to turn around uh, to see it. That just wouldn't be you know, a good idea. And I've given it a rotation to make sure that it's uh, facing the right way. I've given it a width, which sets how wide it is. And I've given it a color. So let's see how that looks. OK, there it is, right? Frame Academy Project 1. Now, it looks OK, but um, you know, especially when you're looking at it a certain way, it doesn't pop out too much, right? It's just kind of text floating, um, sort of dark, and it's on a dark background. The contrast isn't great, right? You want your text to pop out a bit more. So how can we do that? Well, there are a few ways you can do it. What I'm going to do is actually just put a plane, an A plane entity right behind it to just give it some contrast, kind of like giving it its own little background. Okay. So I've got that, the plane that I want already ready to go. I'll put that right here. And now let's see how that looks, right? I've made a plane, given it the position I want. I set this in the A-frame inspector, by the way, and I've given it a color I want, the hex value, right, that I found uh, using this hex color picker. Okay. Once again, the reason why these hex values are important is because not every color sort of has a nice, neat name like orange and black or green, right? There are lots of different variations of orange, right? So this one's not going to have a specific name. Right, uh, but it will have a specific hex value. Okay. Okay, so let's see how that looks. And there we go. It's not the most elegant, uh, beautiful thing in the world, but at least the text really pops out now. It's got its own little background, and it's good to go. I think that's about it for for now. Right, uh, we've kind of a whirlwind tour here, but we've gone over uh, bringing a photosphere. We've gone over bringing in a flat image. And we've gone over uh, bringing text into your project and all you know, under about 15 minutes. So the challenge for this section, uh, challenge number four, I want you to find a photosphere, uh, bring it into your project, set it uh, as the background using the sky element, a sky. Uh, go ahead and bring in a flat image, any flat image, and uh, bring it into your project as I uh, did above. And then also uh, bring in some text, make it say whatever you want, give your website a name. Um, do whatever you want with it and make sure that it pops out, that it's clearly sort of legible and visible. Okay, good luck. I will see you in the final uh, part of this project. And uh, congratulations on making it this far. Hopefully you're starting to see some cool stuff. And hopefully you're starting to see that now that you know these fundamentals, learning how to do more cool things will just become faster and faster. All right, see you soon.